What is up you guys? Welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, just welcome. My name is Gemma Jade, but today we are doing Listener Encounters Volume 10. I know the last one said 11, but I made a mistake and jumped from 9 to 11. Some mistake in there somewhere, a hot mess all day every day. Y'all know me. So I want to jump right in. Doing a lot of filming today and just have a lot of stuff going on. So let's jump right in. Our first encounter is from our friend Blue Crossroads. Yay! Let's see what it is. Gemma, I was talking recently with a longtime friend who asked me if I remembered a UFO encounter that I had had as a young teen. He, along with many others, had seen this encounter and told me that the same type object was witnessed and videoed by the Navy of, off the Atlantic coast and was part of the Pentagon video release. It showed several pyramid-shaped craft in a halo of light following a naval vessel. The exact same craft was my first UFO experience back in the 70s. Others in our chat group asked about the incident and I sent them an account of the sighting. Later that same day, I remembered you were looking for more reports for your encounter series, so I thought I would send you what I sent them. The following is that encounter. Hey guys and gals, some of you were asking about the UFO encounter we were talking about in the chat, the one about the pyramid-shaped craft, so this is what happened. I encountered such a craft as a kid while living in Memphis. Have not heard much about the type I saw until recently when the Pentagon released a video of the exact type of craft following a naval vessel. I'm going off memory of the year, been a while, but I'm thinking it was either 1977 or 1979. I was a kid, but recall the incident well. Living in Memphis at the time and with parents and siblings. It was after dark and we lived two blocks from a park. We had the windows open and I remember being able to hear the faint sounds of the baseball games going on. I was in my room reading and I noticed that all the noise from the park just abruptly stopped. I looked up and saw a massive reddish glow in the front yard and it was kind of flickering. I thought our roof was on fire and jumped up screaming for everyone to get out of the house and that the roof was on fire. We all ran outside only to discover that there was this massive pyramid. Not triangle like I think they thought on the show earlier, but an actual pyramid-shaped object hovering above the park. However, it was big enough that this glow that was surrounding the craft was reflecting as far away as our block. We stood there in amazement for a little bit, and then I ran back in the house and called my friend Ralph, who lived across the street from me, and told him about it. Ralph, along with his family, came out to look at it too. The whole block was outside staring at it. At first, I figured that's why the noise from the park just stopped, as they were probably all looking at it also. My friend Ralph walked over to me and started talking, and that's when I noticed that even though he was right next to me, his voice sounded muffled. Kind of like it does when you're at a rock concert trying to talk to someone while standing in front of the speakers. I looked down the street to the main road and cars were going by, but I couldn't hear them. It's not that this thing was silent. I'm pretty sure it was making some sort of noise, but the frequency was so low or high that it was not registering to the ear, but the concussive waves were making it difficult to hear regular speech. That's crazy. Anyway, after about 20 minutes, it started drifting off towards the north until it was several miles away. It looked like two smaller reddish objects came from the craft and from my perspective shot towards the ground. Could have just been the visual angle. Then it looked like it started shrinking in size rapidly until it was just a dot in the sky that it shot straight up and out of sight. Again, it probably was just heading away at a fast speed and made it appear to shrink in size. That was my only encounter with it. I remember my mom being interviewed the following day on the phone by a local radio station and all the sightings made the paper. It or others were also cited for a few days afterwards throughout the Memphis area. I'm pretty sure that the Memphis Commercial Appeal or whatever it was called then has articles on it. It's not my only brush with things like this, but this is the one I can communicate openly about. Sorry to be so cryptic, but you all know why. Yes, we do. Our Blue Crossroads has like top secret government clearances and it excites me. I can't lie. Tell wifey I said hello and thank you so much for that amazing encounter. I'm going to have to check out those Pentagon videos if they're publicly available. I really don't follow UFOs. I have always been terrified of space and UFOs and aliens my entire life. And I finally realized recently it's because I had some suppressed memories come up. I'll tell you guys all about it in my personal encounters series, um, stories that I'm going to be putting out. Our next encounters, two of them come from Randall Hammond. And I don't know who this is. I don't know what the YouTube handle is, but Randall, if you're listening, um, send me an email and let me know who you are, how you came about, um, 
sending me these because you sent me like seven or eight of them um and i definitely appreciate it but i want to know who you are and um thank you appropriately i just really happy you sent these this one's called old time a car glitch my friend lived in a haunted apartment. Most of the buildings in our downtown are pre-Civil War or in that time era. They have those big windows that are curved on the top. One night, I was standing and looking out of one of these big windows. I was looking down onto the main street and watching the snow come down and looking at the temperature on the bank across the street. When I turned around, there was an old man standing in the hallway by the entrance door. He was looking around like he was lost. Then he noticed me looking at him and he turned around and walked right through the door. I wasn't afraid. He just looked like a harmless old man wearing bib overalls and an apple cap, like a foundry worker from the old days. Super creepy. Um, don't know why it's called old time car glitch, but definitely um, appreciate that. Our next encounter comes from Javier. And he says, hello, Gemma. Hope all is well. I just recently found your YouTube channel. I really enjoy your stories and insight on the paranormal. And I'd like to share my following experience and I'll include a picture. I hope you enjoy it. I'm from Southern California and my family and I enjoy hiking and exploring the outdoors. We have been to several national parks, Muir Forest, Yosemite National Park, Sequoia National Park, Inyo National Forest, Joshua Tree National Park, just to name a few. Continuing, we have beautiful slot canyons in our valleys that we have been hiking for years during some of the aforementioned adventures. I've had a few unexplained paranormal encounters, but I'll leave those for another time. Back in February of this year, it's 2021, my family and I were spending the day out in the slot canyons. Before leaving, we decided to go on one last hike. On our way back, a strong odor of decay caught our attention. We looked around expecting to find a dead animal nearby, but none was found. I noticed a strange looking patch of fur on the ground. I got everyone's attention and we started to examine the piece of fur. I use a critical thinking common sense approach in life. I look for the logical explanation in things. Nevertheless, I know and understand that we are connected to the spiritual realms and God gives us glimpses of this throughout the Bible. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that there are creatures, aka abominations, that are roaming the earth. The book of Noah explains how the fallen angels sinned not only with women, but also the animal kingdom. Therefore, I realize that one must seek a higher understanding and knowledge to make sense of these mysteries. But I digress. No religious debates in the comments, guys, please. We couldn't tell if it belonged to a coyote, a dog, or any other possible desert-dwelling creature. It didn't appear to have been there too long, maybe a couple of days at the most. I also looked around for tracks or perhaps evidence of an animal fight, but there was nothing of that nature to be seen. No blood, bones, disturbed earth, etc. We noticed that the piece of fur was giving off a pretty strong stench. It had thick, dark skin underneath the fur. There were also a few smaller pieces scattered nearby, but I only kept the bigger piece. To add to this mystery, I put the piece of fur inside a sandwich bag and stashed it inside my truck. The next day, I went to clean out my truck and to retrieve the piece of fur. To my surprise, it was nowhere to be found. I asked if anyone had seen it, and no one had. In case you're wondering, there was no way it fell out. Needless to say, I never found it. Strange, huh? I have heard of a few stories of people seeing a dogman creature in this valley. I also heard an account of a lady that spotted a large, dark, bipedal creature in the mountains near a place called Chiriaco Summit here in California. A co-worker also told me that a friend of his had a frightening encounter with a reptilian-like creature in those slot canyons. Might this piece of fur I found belong to the ever-elusive dogman or Bigfoot? We may never know, but it sure adds to the mystery. Blessings. Have a great one and keep up the great work. Maybe one of your viewers can recognize what this might be from. I will put the picture of the piece of fur up. Javier, thank you so much. That is really interesting. And there's a lot that goes on in the mountains and deserts. Um, definitely believe the reptilian story. I'm just starting to get into cryptids. But if any of you know what this could be from, let me know. Um, always in the comments. Thank you so much again for sharing. So our last story is going to come from our good friend, Jason Zorn. First, an Irish blessing. There are good ships and wood ships and ships that sail the sea, but the best ships are friendships and may they ever be. Shout out to my beloved Irish goddess, Gemma Jade. Thank you, sir. Thank you. This is a story of a man who had an encounter, not a creepy confrontation with a spirit, spooky or specter, nor a terrifying encounter with a cryptid, but an encounter nonetheless. It was told to me sometime between 1979 and 1981, so forgive me if my memory serves to be a faulty a little bit, but I believe this story with all my heart, and the teller had evidence and no reason to lie, which I'll elaborate on after the telling. It was around mid-August, 1915, that Dennis Carrington was born in the bustling metropolis of Possum Trot, Texas, 
population, 26 people, 14 cows, 52 chickens, four dogs, and one goat. He grew up working hard on farms, hunting, fishing, and then the crash of 1929 came and America plunged into the Great Depression. Suddenly, finding gainful employment became virtually an impossibly difficult task. During childhood, he met his sweetheart and the two fell in love later, Rosemary Vermillion. Dennis had moved to Frankston, Texas, where the two had met because for a time, Dennis did farm work for Rosemary's father, Jesse Vermillion. When Dennis was 17, he managed to get a job at a gas station in Frankston. One day, an encounter happened, and here's what he told me. It was roughly around late June 1933. Dennis was sweeping up around the garage because the town road was only dirt, and it hadn't rained in ages. It was hot. The sun was just beating him down, sweat dripping from his brow. Distantly, he heard the rattle and rumble of the engine of a distant car approaching. The town had two dirt roads, one going north, south, the other east, west. The approaching car was coming from the west, and soon a car came to a stop at the gas station, red dust billowing in the dry, hot air. A few seconds later, the driver swung open, and a young, obviously somewhat inebriated man stepped out, wearing his hat slightly to one side with a huge smile on his face. Excuse me there, young man, said the man by the car, but would you happen to have any facilities at hand? Dennis pointed toward the back of the garage. There is an outhouse back yonder. That'll do, my good sir, said the man as he nearly stumbled past, the scent of illegal liquor heavy on him. Meanwhile, fill her up and give it a once over, will you? Yes, sir, said Dennis as he began filling the car with gas, checking the oil, and so on. While cleaning the windshield, he couldn't help but notice the leg of a young woman halfway now hanging lazily out of the passenger door window. In the seat sat a very attractive woman who seemed to be looking at something in her hands. He finished up just in time for the man to come back around the front. What's the next town over east? asked the man. That there'd be Jacksonville, sir, replied Dennis. I see, smiled the man. They got any good eating there? I reckon so. Sorry, my accent's not that good. The man looked at his windshield and how clean it looked. Mighty fine job. What's your name there, my good man? Dennis, sir. Dennis Milton Carrington. Well, pleasure meeting you. My name's Clyde, Clyde Barrow. And this here pretty young lady is Miss Bonnie Parker. Bonnie smiled and waved. Clyde paid for the gas and then went to the driver door. I think you need a tip for such a fine job. And he reached inside the car and pulled out ten silver dollars and tossed them to Dennis. They landed on the ground at his feet. Clyde smiled, tipped his hat, climbed into the car, started it, and drove east. A cloud of dust soon concealing the car from sight. Dennis picked up the silver dollars. He couldn't believe it. Ten dollars was twice what he would make in a week or more. Years passed and Dennis was finally able to marry Rosemary in the fall of 1941 and he was able to buy a pretty substantial amount of property from her family and he had plans on building a house. Then, December 7, 1941, the Japanese bombed the naval forces at Pearl Harbor, Hawaii and Dennis joined the United States Navy where he was sent to the South Pacific in World War II. He witnessed hell on earth. He was a tough boot before going to war but when he returned, he was really tough. Him and Rosemary had a son and three daughters, of which I was born from the oldest daughter. He was my grandpa, my mentor, my storyteller, and he taught me not just about life, but about living. Again, sorry about my poor accent. I asked Jason to send me that story because I accidentally deleted it. Jason, thank you so much. You know my obsession with Bonnie and Clyde. So this is one more from Randall. I think I experienced a time anomaly. I was out in the country on a bridge over a river watching the water and I heard the engine sound coming over the hill of an old car from the 1920s like it was coming towards me, maybe a Ford sedan. When the old car was going past, I could see it was full of people dressed like they did back in the 20s. They sounded like they were booze cruising. They were laughing and having a good time. I swear the driver looked like Al Capone. He had a big old stogie in his mouth and he looked at me and smiled. When the car went past and was about to cross the railroad tracks, it just faded out. I had a lot of weird things happen in this area over the years. Well, thank you, Randall. Thank you to everyone who contributed to tonight's listener encounters. And guys, please continue to send in your stories. The longer, the better, the scarier, the better. Or if you, you know, have, again, strange encounters like I did last week, they weren't scary, but they were um, very strange. And let us know that there's more to this life and to this universe. Um, some people were complaining about those are supposed to be scary. No, they're not. They're just encounters. I'm asking for encounters with the supernatural paranormal. They don't have to be scary. Sure, I like scary too, but give me a break. Please give this video a big thumbs up, not just for me if you enjoyed spending this time with me, but for everybody who put themselves out there and decided to share their stories and encounters. 
spread the love by sharing this video. Subscribe if you haven't already. I don't think you'll be disappointed. If you can do me another favor and check out the description box, we have justice for Caleb Smith, the GoFundMe for Caleb, information and links to the three live streams with Stemma every single week, Friday night campfire stories on missing persons and mysteries, Sunday night fireside chat on missing persons and mysteries, and Wednesday night the oracle card readings on this channel. You can find that info down there in the description box. And uh, for financial donations to the channel, my PayPal, Patreon, and my Amazon link is in there as well. Guys, I'm sorry to keep doing it, but I'm doing it in every video this week. My book is out, Missing the Fay Theory by Gemma Jade. I'm going to leave the link for the paperback and the Kindle um, editions or versions, whatever you want to call it, in the description box as well. That's the affiliate link. If you have any encounters with the supernatural and or paranormal you want me to read on my listener encounter series please go on ahead and email me at gemmajadeparanormal at gmail.com guys be kind not just to each other but to yourselves it costs nothing to be a nice decent kind human being always go in grace keep your side of the street clean smile at a stranger have your best day have your best night and i will see you next time